Hi, I'm Jack. Welcome to my gutter. In the last few weeks here, we've had our first big rainstorms of the season, and all the stuff on our roof just washed off into the gutter. So today, I'm going to be looking through this stuff and trying to find meteorites. So, so I'm up here with a trowel, and I'm just scooping it up and collecting kind of this nasty sludge and saving it. This is a project that I've had in mind for a while, and here's the basic idea. So every year, something like 100,000 tons of material comes down to Earth from outer space, and it falls all over the Earth, which is really big, and my roof isn't that big. But just some rough estimates tell me that I should expect about 50 milligrams of meteorites to fall on my roof every year. So it's mostly dust and little stuff, but still. My roof is about 10 years old, so there could be up to half a gram of meteorite on my roof. Just a side note, a lot of shingles are made with fiberglass, and I got a couple splinters doing this, so if you're going to do this at home, I recommend wearing gloves or something like that. Alright, then let's get to work. I've got two big tubs full of dirt and leaves and rocks that I pulled off of the roof, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wash them in water so that all the dirt and grit settles down to the bottom and I can pull off the leaves that I don't really want. Now that I've gotten through most of the leaves and I'm just down to the sludge and rocks at the bottom, I'm going to be pretty careful not to lose any of this stuff because I think this is where any of the meteorites would be. I've emptied everything into a gold pan, and now it's just the same as panning for gold, but it's panning for meteorites. The idea here is that all the dense stuff is sinking down to the bottom where all the lighter stuff at the top keeps getting washed off. So ideally all the meteorites will end up at the bottom of the pan and all the trees and leaves and stuff will get a chance to get washed away. Now that there's not much left in the pan, I'm gonna wash over and see if we picked anything up. This was the part of the process when I realized that I'm actually not that good at panning for meteorites. So I took what I had inside and tried something else. I poured everything off onto a piece of paper, and unsurprisingly it kind of looks like a shingle. But it still might contain some meteorites that we're looking for. So one thing I still have going for me is that the meteorites I'm looking for are almost certainly magnetic, while the rest of these rocks are not. I'm going to use a magnet, and cover it in a cloth, and sweep through it pick out anything magnetic. Then I can take out the magnet and leave the cloth. I took all of the magnetic rocks we just got and I put them under the microscope so we can take a look at them, see what they are and if any of them are meteorites. One type of rock we can identify very easily is this purple hematite. This is an iron oxide, so it's not surprising at all that it's magnetic, but it's probably not a meteorite. I believe that this grain is mostly magnetite, along with many others in here, and it's another iron oxide, and it's very dense and magnetic, as you might have guessed. A large number of the grains have this very speckled appearance, and I don't actually think that's the natural rock. I think these are dark rocks that have been treated. Uh, I know it's common to put a ceramic coating on these like roof granules, so I think that's what's happening on a lot of these petals. Like basically almost every one is speckled, light and dark, and I think that's what's going on. Here's a piece of what looks like is quartz, which is not exactly a great sign since quartz is one of the least dense minerals that forms rocks. So it might mean that I did a bad job separating out the masses while I was panning, making it difficult to find a meteorite now. I believe that the dark mineral in this grain is a tourmaline, and the rest of the pebble is a mica schist, so that means this is a mid-grade metamorphic rock. This dark rock in the middle of the view is a piece of basalt, I believe, and these white splotches are individual plagioclase feldspar grains. I think this grain here is a quartzite showing some epidote on it, 
which is just another low to mid grade metamorphic rock. All right, all right. Thank you for your patience while I talked about rocks. But now let me get to the point. Did I find meteorites on my roof? And the answer is yes, I did. Let me show you. Here is everything that I think looks at least kind of like a meteorite, although I don't think everything here is a meteorite. First, these kind of glassy, sear shaped ones, followed by kind of these glassy fragments. Then a kind of transitional one that I think may be a meteorite. And finally, these two, which I really think are meteorites. So now we'll zoom in on each of these. These glassy ones are good looking, but unfortunately I don't think any of them are actually meteorites. The kind of round ones on the right hand side are tempting because they do look really well rounded and like they've been melted recently. But there's actually a fair amount of this blue glassy material in all the rocks I looked at. And for that reason I think they're kind of an industrial byproduct added during the shingle manufacturing process. So especially the ones on the left hand side, I think there's no way they're meteorites but I included them just to show context for the ones on the right hand side. The next one looks a little more promising. It's got kind of a dark color and it has kind of a scaly, melty surface, but around the edges it does look like it's kind of clear and glass-like, so it's a little bit difficult to tell whether it actually is part of the blue glass or not, so for that reason I'm not totally sure whether or not this is a meteorite. And now onto the two that I think really could be meteorites. Starting with the one on the left hand side, it's got this beautiful spherical shape and kind of this orange peel skin texture. It really seems clear that it was recently melted and it looks like just nothing else in, the, in any of the rocks. So this one I really believe is a meteorite. Then the one on the right hand side, it's got this dark color and this beautiful banding that again looks nothing like anything else. And I think the banding we see in it is a product of the melting and cooling process, and you see that in other micrometeorites as well. If you're interested in doing this at home, I have a few tips for you. So tip number one is you do not actually need a microscope, and in fact it was actually easier for me to pick out meteorites when I just spread everything out on the piece of paper, and I just went over it really closely with tweezers. And that actually helped me find meteorites faster because I could see the light reflecting off of them and stuff like that. And the only other tip I have is use plenty of light. The more light the better, it just makes everything easier to see when things are so small. Another thing I would try to do differently if I did this again is I would try to find a different roof to use. As much fun as it was to look at all the rocks that make up the shingles on my roof, um, it made it a lot more difficult to find rocks that were actually meteorites. So I think either a tile roof would be good, or if you can get on some kind of industrial roof with like a vinyl coating where you can just sweep up and then, or like magnet up any kind of rocks you see. That would be make this a lot easier. But anyway, I'm really stoked on finding meteorites on my roof. And I hope you enjoyed it too. And if you do try it, let me know. I'd love to see more meteorites. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hi, I hope you liked the video. This part is something like an appendix about filming with the phone through the microscope. And uh, it took a few tries to get it right, so I'd like to go through what I did to make it work. The first thing I did is I just got this scrap wood, and I drilled a hole. So it pressed fit onto the eyepiece, just like that. And then what I wanted to do was just clamp my phone on, just like that. So there's at least two problems with doing it this way. The first is that the actual image that you see on the phone camera doesn't take up the whole screen. And I think what the issue is, is that when you look through the microscope with your eye, you're actually a certain distance away from the lens, and that gives the lens the distance it needs to like expand the image after it goes through, like the focusing element. So well, on the next design, we're going to have to move this further back. And the other thing is that there's a lot of light interference. And for instance, if I put my hand over there and cover the light, you can see the image gets a lot better. Here's kind of a crappy drawing of what I'm going to make for the next version. So this is the side where the phone goes, and there needs to be a smaller hole that kind of just fits around the lens of the camera and doesn't let light in. Then at the base, there needs to be the bigger hole that fits the eyepiece. This distance here has to be the right distance for the right focal length of the camera and the microscope. So let's go cut that out. Start by cutting out the rough shape I want out of some old scrap wood. Then I head over to the drill press and use a 5 16 inch drill bit to drill the center hole and a 1 3 8 inch spade bit to get the main bore where the eyepiece goes in. And I'm checking the depth against the caliper which I set when I figured out the distance I needed earlier. 
Then I use a three quarters inch countersinking bit to cut out the cone, and there's my final product. So I think that looks pretty good. I've got the phone mounted up, and I got it all centered so the, the lens is right in the middle of the hole. So let's check out some first impressions. So, first of all, seems a little out of focus. There we go, we can focus it. But one thing I'm not happy about, it's loose on the eyepiece. It's not doing a good job holding itself on. So, uh, I'm going to have to work on that a little bit. And I think it's not far enough back. This image is actually too big. I just want to see like a circle in the screen, but it, it's uh, overshooting. So I'm going to make it a little bit deeper, and then we'll go from there. Having done that, let's give it another shot. And this time the image still isn't as small as I would, as I would want. Still definitely getting cut off on the edges. But the focus looks good, and it's doing a better job holding on to the board. So I think at this point I'm just going to leave it. And I'm going to say that's good enough for now. So thank you for watching. Hope you like that.